Because upon the creation of Eve, man became a kind. Thus we have man kind. Because woman is a kind of man. You know, there's three reasons why you're here. You know what they are? That is women. Number one is to serve God. And of course, that's why we're here too, to serve God. That's foremost. But now the second reason why you are here, women, is to feel the need of me. And the third reason why you're here is to give the man of your choosing. These are the three reasons why you live and why you exist. And women are well equipped for this role. Okay, words of wisdom there from governing body member Samuel Hurd in a talk entitled The Value of Our Theocratic Sisters. Um, and that ex excerpt is courtesy of uh, my plastic microphone channel. Um, and besides those uh, belittling and unscriptural remarks, he went on to say, you know, scientists say that the cranial capacity of a woman is 10% smaller than that of a man. And this shows that she is not equipped for the role of headship. Her role is one of subjection to the man. So, what do those comments that the governing body member Sam Hurd made um, in this talk have to do with the 1924 novel Age, uh, Angels and Women that we saw the photograph of there? Um, I think a clue can be found here in the description that is on uh, Amazon.com. This book can be uh, purchased um, in a new edition. And in the description it says, this was a time when the universe was at peace with its creator, but that soon changed when some of God's angelic messengers rebelled and tried to usurp God's power and attempted to rule the earth themselves. And how did they do this? Those most vulnerable were the women on earth who would be the main target of this rebellion. Would these women stand firm or would they give in to the sensual and material advances of these powerful angelic creatures. Now, Sam heard in another talk, which we'll hear excerpts from um, in a moment, when, it, when uh, he read this book, he says he couldn't put it down. He had to read it from cover to cover, and, and he considers it highly recommended reading. So apparently this theme of women's vulnerability, um, their innate inability to resist temptations, even when they were obviously um, from the wicked spirits who were rebelling against God. This apparently, this, these ideas um, from this novel apparently captured his imagination. Um, and to some extent, I would say, influenced his thinking. So this um, book, Angels and Women, was a revision uh, of an 1878 novel written by Anne Eliza Smith. And what they did is, is it was revised by someone uh, who was a friend of Pastor Russell's, um, who is anonymous. We don't know who did the revision um, of Ciola and turned it into Angels and Women. But the original novel um, purported to be a translation of an ancient scroll diary written by a woman named Ciola. And in the appendix section of the novel, Anne Smith describes how she was inspired to write this fantasy. She writes, 
Ciola is a fantasy revealed to the writer while listening to the performance of an extraordinary musical composition. It was sudden and unforeseen as the landscape which sometimes appears to a benighted traveler for one instant only illuminated by the lightning's flash. So apparently the ideas for this novel were um, revealed to her in some sort of vision or theophany, um, some sort of encounter with the supernatural. So let's go on and listen to Governing Body Sam Hurd's comments on the novel Angels and Women. Gilead Library called Angels and Women. What a fascinating book it is. It's a book of fiction, but it tells the story of what life could have been like prior to the flood, especially between the disobedient angelic sons of God and their wives, the ups and the downs. And it traces the uh, story of a couple of marriages of that sort, and when the going would get rough, why then the Disobedient angel would just dematerialize, leave his wife, show up somewhere else in another part of the world. Maybe later on he may just come back to that the woman that he had. But it's such a fascinating book. Once you pick it up, you can't hardly put it down without uh, reading it from cover to cover. But it is a book of fiction. But what makes it unique is that Pastor Russell, the first president of the Lost Star Society, is supposed to have written the foreword to the book. Now, of course, the book doesn't label his name, but he's supposed to have written the foreword to the book, and in the foreword he says this very well could have been the, the lifestyle of that period of time. The Bible has this one chapter on it, and it doesn't say that much, but nevertheless, here we find a world filled with wickedness. Okay, he says... It was fascinating. He couldn't put it down. Um, it talks about a period of uh, Bible history about which there's only um, one chapter in the Bible. Um, so let's see what Wikipedia has to say about the plot um, of this novel, Sayola, upon which Angels and Women was based. Um, it says that the diary of Ciola is about a girl's struggle to resist a wicked world. Her resolve to remain loyal to God is so strong that she influences a fallen angel to repentance. Now there is a key to why I think the Watchtower published this book in 1924. Remember in 1924, um, Joseph Rutherford was president of the society and we know that in um, some of his books he claimed um, that fallen angels could in fact work out their salvation um, and repent and be accepted back in um, to uh, God's organization. And one of the ways that he believed they could do this was by delivering messages uh, from God to the uh, earthly organization of God, which would uh, basically be him. Um, we know that he described uh, receiving messages um, from angels trying to work out their salvation with God. So I think that uh, by recommending this book, it was reinforcing this belief. Okay, you can go on and read the rest of the plot summary yourself. Um, under derivative works, it says, in 1924, an anonymous author published a revision of Ciola under the title Angels and Women. The content within the revised edition depends upon the teachings of the Jehovah's Witnesses. The appendix quotes passages from their published works, scenario of the photodrama creation, the harp of God, which was written by Joseph Rutherford, studies in the scriptures, and a desirable, desirable government. Most names and places in the book were changed, and angels and But the main point um, that I think is that is applicable, applicable to uh, Sam Hurd's comments 
is this theme in the plot that the women on Earth at the time um, were the, the main target of the angels who were trying to rebel against God um, because of being women they were unable to see through the plot they were unable to resist the temptations placed before them uh, by these fallen angels and therefore um, they, the plot succeeded and the whole earth um, was under the control of Satan the devil as a result. So, Okay, so in a, the notes at the end of this Wikipedia article, they state that um, in a book review of Ciola, um, a magazine believed that one of the compositions that motivated Smith to write this novel, that is one of the, the compositions, the musical compositions that she was listening to when she had her vision um, was ha uh, Haydn's The Prelude to the Creation. So what more appropriate music is there to end all this with than Franz Joseph Haydn's hymn Creation?